Okay, let me just quickly clear the board. 1 plus y squared. Okay, I'll rearrange that to x divided by 2 equals to y squared 1 plus x, y squared. There we go. Smart, very ingenious, very clever. Using the angle phi somewhere in the diagram to re to represent the x and y and then after that linking them linking the two variables with this equation something that we clearly cannot see or it will be very difficult if you use another method now back to our area and we almost got it a equals to half take away half integrate okay okay this half is basically uh, x divided by 2 okay so we can just immediately write see this half times side is x divided by 2 so we're going to integrate 0 to 1 Okay, x divided by 2, okay, dy, which is equals to, okay, half, take away, integrate, substituting using the, the, the relationship that we have found out, y squared divided by 1 plus y squared dy. And now, another problem, okay? How are we going to integrate that? Now, firstly, if the top is the derivative, we can use like ln, okay, but I don't want to use that because it's messy. Leibniz doesn't want to use that because it's messy. But what he did was that if you notice, okay, this, okay, is equals to y squared, okay, and you must have seen this in your sum and series, okay, 1 plus y squared minus 1 to the power of minus 1, and then we can re-express that as 1 take away y squared plus y4 take away y6, so on and so forth, okay? Using the sum, the sum to infinity, okay, of a certain function. In this case, it is that function over there, okay? And then after that, dy, we just multiply the y squared inside, okay? So it's half, take away integrate 0 to 1, okay, erase this away. 0 to 1, multiply the y squared inside and then integrate accordingly, y4, that will be a plus y6, take away y8, plus dy, okay, now I can integrate very neatly, I like that, very neatly, 1 divided by 3, y3, that will be plus, sorry, minus, yep, 1 divided by 5, y5, that will be a plus, 1 divided by 7, y7, so on and so forth. Evaluate and add 1 to 0, not a problem, equals to half, take away 1, sorry, take away 1 third, right? Let me just check. Yeah, correct, take away 1 third plus 1 fifth, take away 1 seventh, okay, plus 1 ninth, so on and so forth. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the area over here, correct? Okay? But have we forgot about something? We just simply need to add up the area of the triangle. You see, the area that we found over here is this area like so, okay? Yeah, now I can just destroy the diagram. It's this area like so, okay? Using the sum and then we integrate accordingly. So basically, we want the whole area, which is using the usual geometric method which we all are familiar with, pi divided by 4, okay? Simply this add up with the area over here, which we all know is half, okay? 1 times 1 divided by half. So basically this, we just add a half, okay? It becomes 1, take away 1 divided by 5 plus 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 5, take away 1 divided by 7 plus 1 divided by 9, so on and so forth. And ladies and gentlemen, this is how the great Lipnitz discovered pi. Amazing, okay? Pi divided by 4 is equal to this thing over here and infinite sum. It's really good and wow, I just take a look back and just marvel at this guy's genius because it combines the integral calculus, it combines geometry, remember using the trigonometry functions to link the y and the x, and then after that, knowing that we can write it as an infinite series. Leibniz discovered pi and he took great joy in discovering this wonderful formula. And pi divided by 4 is equal to 1, so again, 1 to take away plus 1 fifth, take away 1 seven, plus 1 nine. Okay, I hope I did his discovery justice. If not, just let me know. Limits, great man. Better than you, I don't know, but great man.